compared to 50 uh, or even 60 years ago, life moves quicker. Get the you know, speed of cars. You know, smartphones and the internet have essentially changed the way we do business, interact socially, and spend our free time. Some are dubbing this the fourth industrial revolution, and the change that this new revolution will cause will be more drastic than any prior period of human history. Now, we don't know whether that's true, because it's in the future, but perhaps we finally reached a point where our prosperity doesn't depend on taking resources from the planet. You are watching Disrupt. In this book, More From Less, we start with a look back at human progress until the last 200 years. Our documentation of that time period says progress was slow, both in terms of population growth and productivity. It wasn't until the early 19th century that we became a species of one billion. The pace of population then increased. In 124 years, we've reached a population of two billion in 1927. Now, 33 years later, in 1960, we've reached 3 billion. Since then, we've added a billion every 12 to 15 years, hitting 7.7 .7 in 2019. For the bulk of human history, it was inconceivable that this many people would be able to live on Earth and do so prosperously. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, there was an inverse relationship between population and prosperity. Too many people meant resources were spread too thin. Those resources were finite, so not only were resources limited, but we didn't have an efficient or scalable way of extracting and utilizing them. Enter the Industrial Revolution. For all of human history to that point, the only power sources we could draw on were muscles, wind, and falling water. The Watt steam engine and its descendants added to that list a set of machines that drew on fossil fuels and profoundly changed our relationship with our planet. So the steam engine, electricity, global population, income growth, these are all increasing and coming together for the first time in history at unprecedented rates. The book points out other advancements that impacted us like nitrogen-based fertilizer, giving agricultural yields a huge boost, uh, indoor plumbing, meaning people you know, have clean water, and key elements of the capitalist system like patents, LLCs, and companies to organize ourselves within these tribes. Speaking of strong technologies, you always want a strong password to keep the bad guys out. Which brings us to our sponsor this week, Dashlane. Dashlane is an encrypted password manager. So rather than remembering multiple passwords for multiple websites, Dashlane makes it easy to generate secure passwords via their dashboard. The only pass you have to remember is your master pass. The passwords you use are encrypted locally on your device, reducing the chance of stolen identity because no one, not even Dashlane, has access to your data and passwords. Dashlane Premium also offers a built-in VPN for extra protection when browsing at a coffee shop. Try Dashlane for free and get 10% off of Dashlane Premium using our coupon code DISRUPT via the link in the description below. So it all sounds great. More people living longer, more things, why not? Well, it all came with a cost. The Industrial Revolution caused us to tread more heavily on the environment that we placed our cities in. Now, this trade-off is where we are now. But perhaps there's motivation, because we've finally reached the turning point. So what's behind all this? Four things. Technological progress, capitalism, responsive government, public awareness. When these four things coincide together, it seems that we progressively dematerialize our consumption and hopefully take better care of our fellow man. So let's look at dematerialization. In the 2000s, all of these things, a CD player, 
DVDs, a camera, books would weigh a couple pounds in a backpack. Now all of these things fit in a rectangle that weighs less than a pound. A greater percentage of people on Earth own a smartphone than ever own TVs, cameras, or CD players. So it's undeniable that as a whole, we are getting more from less. So this is dematerialization and it's closely linked to capitalism. So on one hand, resources cost money, and using fewer resources means spending less money, which means making more money. But how do we make sure that the developing countries don't repeat the resource-hungry mistakes? Well, we can look to India and Nigeria, for example. Neither country is continuing to lay copper wire for telecommunications because they have cell phones. So now that renewable energy is becoming more abundant, cheap and accessible, countries will look to it for their energy needs. So it seems that from energy to agriculture to education, developing nations are hopefully leapfrogging right over the long learning curve. As more of our lives, experiences, and possessions become digitized, it's hard to argue that we haven't already surpassed peak physical objects. But if it's all going to play out in a way that we can be proud of, there's much work still to be done. For more on this topic, I'd highly recommend McAfee's book. Thanks for watching.